command of the Lord they remained in camp, and at the command of the Lord they journeyed. They kept the charge of the Lord at the command of the Lord by the hand of Moses. So at this time in Middle Eastern history, writing was a precious thing. It was done with as few words as possible. A lot of visual imagery and metaphor was used, especially in the Hebrew language. You see that throughout scripture. So when you have a lot of extra words thrown in that are not needed as extra information, it is telling you that there's a different point to this passage. This was something really important to God. The whole idea that Israel would journey as he journeyed. They would go with him as he went. They would stop as he went. They would follow his lead. They would be at one with him in this process of journey. Israel's journey started the first month of the year, walking out of Egypt with the Exodus. And just for a totally different purpose, I'm just going to point out the first child of Israel, of the 12 tribes, Reuben, his name means see a son. And at Passover, we are seeing the Son of God. Right? That's about the last thing that we're told at Jesus' crucifixion. Surely this is the Son of God by Gentile Roman soldier. And that's God's point and point out. And this is where the journey begins to go into our liberty out of slavery. But seven months later, in a couple days, the new moon. The seventh child of Israel, his name is Gad, which has two meanings. Good fortune, a troop is coming. All right? Talking about enemies a lot today. Enemies are a big issue. They're out in the wilderness. God is protecting them. There's a cloud by day over the tabernacle saying God is here. There's a pillar of fire by night saying God is here. And all of a sudden it moves and it says, we're going to blow some trumpets and get moving. Good fortune. A troop is coming. God is with us. He is fighting for us. He is doing good for us. This is our God loving us. Where is he taking us? Not sure. We just follow to where the spirit lands, and that's where we camp. Let's look at chapter 10. It's about trumpets and how to use them in all sorts of situations. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Make two silver trumpets for yourself. You shall make them of hammered work. You shall use them for calling the congregation and for directing the movement of the camps. When they blow both of them, all the congregation shall gather before you at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. But if they blow only one, then the leaders, the heads of the divisions of Israel, shall gather to you. When you sound the advance, the camps that lie on the east side shall begin their journey. When you sound the advance the second time, then the camps lie on the south side shall begin their journey. And they shall sound the call for them to begin their journeys. So just to show the progression around the camp, who is next in line. When the assembly is to be gathered together, you shall blow, but not sound the advance. The sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow the trumpets, and these shall be to you as an ordinance forever throughout your generations. When you go to war in your land against the enemy who oppresses you, then you shall sound an alarm with the trumpets, and you will be remembered before the Lord your God, and you will be saved from your enemies. Also on the day of your gladness, in your appointed feast, at the beginning of your months, you shall blow the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, and they shall be memorial for you before the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. What does this mean? <laughs> Why 
is God doing it this way? Whenever there's a holy day, there's a new moon, a sacrifice in the tent of the congregation, the tabernacle, God is having them blow a trumpet. Just like they're moving their camp, even though they're not moving their camp, they're moving their soul. They're moving their spirit. God has got a calendar. He's got a growth program throughout the year. A lit liturgy, if we can use that word. This month we're talking about this issue. This month, this issue. Oh, a holy day, whole new subject and matter. God is saying, Move out of your camp where you're safe and comfortable. I want to take you somewhere else. Look where I want to take you. Look where he wanted to take them at the Passover. <laughs> to the promised land from slavery. Look where he wanted to take them at Pentecost. From just being regular people to being kings that he is making a covenant with each one of them to bring them into his palace, his royalty, his way of living and serving and loving. Even when you have war, what is going on? You have an enemy that's oppressing you. Why does Israel have an enemy that oppresses them? Book of Judges. There's a story of why they have oppressors. We have moved ourselves away from our God, and he's saying, come back. And he's pushing with the enemy to get people to come back to where? Come back to where your soul is ready to move, to move out, to have a judge sounding the trumpet of the cry of the gut of God that you are my people. Where are you? You're supposed to be here with me. God calling out with the enemy as his trumpet and sending someone to clarify the message they have been ignoring and tell them God's judgment. You are moving over here. Get ready. Move. God wants you back. The rest of the chapter goes into their first journey following this, the blowing of the trumpets and moving out. Verse 35. Well, let's back up. 33. So they departed from the mountain of the Lord on a journey of three days. And the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord went before them for three days' journey to search out a resting place for them. And the cloud of the Lord was above them by day when they went out from the camp. So it was whenever the Ark set out that Moses said, Rise up, O Lord, let your enemies be scattered, and let those who hate you flee before you. And when it rested, he said, Return, O Lord, to the many thousands of Israel. So this idea that when God was moving Israel, there was a re reality that there was an enemy presence somehow. But they're in the wilderness. There's very few people that live out there. So maybe the enemy was themselves as their own enemy. And maybe we can see that in the three books of the Torah that focuses on that journey and how God had to drag out that time period for 40 years instead of just the 11 weeks it would have taken to walk it. The enemy that sometimes God is removing us from is here. What is in my heart? What is going on? 
God is moving his spirit over here and I don't feel its presence where I am and how I am. What is going on? He's calling us to make a sacrifice sometimes, right? And blow the trumpet. I am coming back to where I'm supposed to be. This is a recognition that Christ died for my sins. And I just found out there was a lot more than I thought. And he's taking me through that to bring me to a wholeness and a cleanliness and move to a new part of the camp beyond where my current enemy in my flesh is. And I walk away. Am I mourning the security I have here? Or am I looking forward to? Am I celebrating? the opportunity to blossom over here. Do I live camped in my old life and live in my limits? Or do I open myself up to God can still use Moses after 80 years of bitterness and resentment and stuck in the impossible doing of God's will that was my destiny my seeds of destiny that God planted in me, that I failed miserably and became a sinner and a murderer and banished. Am I willing to move? Am I willing to grow? Am I willing to let this feast of trumpets, this seventh trumpet of the new moons, the last trumpet in the book of Revelation, the seventh trumpet, where the resurrection of the dead occurs. Am I willing to move that far? Is it a coincidence that God timed us to move here? <laughs> That's why I said what I did in the opening. God timed us to move here. He opened my eyes to see this message, to share it. And that was before we knew we were doing this. <laughs> this is how important this message is to God. Hallelujah. What he told us in those six verses after the first three verses about whenever they moved, whenever the spirit moved, they went with it. He, he's telling us how much he cherishes us to be with him us to be in his presence, us to be at home with him, us to follow, us to be taught by him, us to be led by him, us to be his people. He's not judging or criticizing us. Any parent here knows that's not how you raise children. <laughs> you don't condemn. You wonder, you are amazed that as the seeds of destiny are coming true in their lives, you have the privilege of helping them move in that direction for it to become real and whole. Feast of trumpets. Are you ready to let God move you? What has he been showing you about your seeds of destiny? What is your next step that he wants to grow you into? Is that where your heart is? Or are we? I like it where I am. I know that's a big challenge. But it is the challenge we have. Right? The resurrection to a totally new type of person in life. And God's next step in his program to save the human race. That is what we're participating in, this Feast of Trumpets. Thank you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.